This video will concern developmental psychopathology in middle childhood. Children with special needs are children who have some physical or mental disability which requires then special help uh, in order to learn. And in the U.S., one out of six children face these type of needs. For some of them, then developmental psychopathology is the source of their special needs. And when we say uh, psychopathology, uh, this may be thought of as uh, mental or emotional disorder, uh, problems in uh, the normal cognitive processes, and developmental psychopathology means that the person's emotional, mental, or cognitive development has gone off course and is not following the uh, normal course of development. Now, there are many causes for this. Uh, there can be biological causes, uh, genetic, or uh, caused uh, by uh, malnutrition, for example, is a physical cause, or the cause of developmental psychopathology also may be some experience that the child has had. The consequences of this may include that the child has difficulty learning, difficulty forming relationships, communicating, a wide range of difficulties may result. We'll look at some specific types of developmental psychopathology here in a moment. Now as we look at this, we should be aware of the fact that everyone acts outside of the norms at times. Uh, that doesn't necessarily uh, constitute psychopathology. And we should also recognize that even those who have serious disabilities are still more similar to others than they are different just for the fact that we are human and that disabilities may vary with time. They may be more, uh, more pr prominent at certain points in time, less so at others. They may cause more difficulty at certain times than others. And we should also know that the prognosis, the uh, course of that disorder varies from one person to another, from one type of problem to another, and is often very difficult to predict, especially in childhood. We should also take into account the child's cultural and social context in diagnosing these type of disorders. Um, in some cases, there are things that are part of one's culture that might uh, suggest psychopathology within other cultural groups, uh, but because of differing beliefs and differing norms, we have to take these into account. The first on our list, then, uh, would be Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And for many years, educators have used the term ADD for children that had difficulty with uh, attention. So, uh, Attention Deficit Disorder. Notice le this leaves out the hyperactivity uh, element. Uh, that said, that's not a current psychological diagnostic term, but you still may hear it being used, uh, especially within the educational system. ADHD, as uh, indicated in the DSM-5 Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, uh, has three main characteristics. The person uh, suffers from inattentiveness, difficulty controlling their attention, and in each case we would say in comparison of others of the same age. And hyperactivity. The person is uh, unable to control their activity level, again as compared to others their age. And thirdly, impulsiveness. Uh, we might refer to that as acting without thinking it through first, and again, this would be as compared to others their age. In ADHD, uh, actually there are 
three basic forms, one that is primarily uh, inattentive and uh, the other that is primarily hyperactive and impulsive. Uh, most common though is the mixed type where all three of these things are, are evident. Children who have ADHD often experience comorbidity. Uh, com comorbidity is where there is more than one problem or disorder present. Uh, kids with ADHD uh, may also experience other disorders. Conduct disorder, uh, they may uh, have uh, difficulties with uh, depression or anxiety disorders, uh, learning disorders, and a few of them uh, might even experience bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or autism. Uh, that said, uh, most children with ADHD, uh, their primary difficulty is going to be that ADHD. Now, there are many uh, hypotheses about why we have uh, many children developing ADHD today. And one would suggest that um, brain development uh, is the problem that the prefrontal cortex is delayed in development, giving the person difficulty uh, controlling their impulses and uh, their, their activity. Uh, also potentially an overly active limbic system uh, that might uh, cause the child to constantly be seeking reward and potentially maybe a chemical imbalance, uh, maybe uh, the activity of various neurotransmitters uh, is not what it should be. Uh, other hypotheses are that it uh, the incidence of this has increased due to maternal smoking, uh, especially prenatally, uh, or exposure to lead. Now that may have been the case some years ago, uh, but uh, we don't have as much lead exposure here in the U.S. as there used to be. That said, in other parts of the world, uh, uh, excessive exposure to lead through maybe old lead paint that children are uh, ingesting uh, might lead to ADHD symptoms. Uh, others might suggest a lack of discipline. However, uh, when we look at it, children with ADHD do not respond as readily to discipline, although it does have an effect. Uh, it is not as um, um, prominent as, as what you would find uh, with children who do not have ADHD. Others have suggested that the media and TV may be contributing uh, as the media uh, TV shifts back and forth from one scene to another. Uh, every few seconds, uh, children don't learn to uh, control their attention. Some suggest food additives, and indeed for some children with ADHD, when various food ad additives are removed from their diet, there is improvement, uh, but that doesn't go for all that have ADHD. One thing that is seen frequently with people, uh, in fact almost across the board, those with ADHD, generally a low level of arousal, uh, physical and mental activation uh, when resting, when there is nothing to do. Uh, in fact, many times they get uh, just sleepy and uh, nod right out. And so in fact the constant activity uh, and shifting from one thing to another is an attempt to uh, to stay engaged, to uh, try to increase that level of arousal through activity and uh, also uh, the impulsive actions may be a matter of uh, trying to find something stimulating uh, in order to raise that level of arousal. Other suggestions have been uh, this is the extreme male brain. It is true this is diagnosed much more frequently amongst males than females or maybe even uh, what we might call hunter genes and uh, in fact this sort of uh, pattern uh, might have helped our ancestors to be more successful at hunting game, uh, being able to respond impulsively when the game approaches uh, and so on. So uh, those are some possible explanations.
Now, when children are diagnosed with ADHD, the most common treatment uh, provided are stimulant drugs, uh, Adderall, Ritalin, uh, and the like. And the stimulant drugs do seem to have a paradoxical effect, opposite effect, on children who are hyperactive. And this also supports the low level of arousal theory. Uh, these stimulants artificially raise the level of arousal so that the child doesn't have to engage in hyperactive behavior uh, to do so. Um, that said, some children who have ADHD also may be put on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication to treat other problems that stem from the ADHD. Uh, the child may become depressed because they have more difficulty learning due to a lack of attention or they may become anxious when they can't meet the expectations of their parents and teachers. Now, when it comes to the diagnosis of this, uh, we should recognize that the primary diagnosis of this is done by observation. Uh, there are no uh, effective medical tests to identify who has this. Instead, uh, at least three people will make observations of the child and use a behavior checklist to identify behaviors related to ADHD. Generally that's going to be the clinician, whether that's a medical doctor, psychiatrist, or psychologist, or and then uh, secondly uh, generally the child's parent as well as then uh, a teacher at school. And the idea is that uh, if the child truly has ADHD they will show those symptoms uh, across the board not in just one situation. Where it's in just one particular environment it may be more of a matter of discipline. Now we also know that there is uh, both some overdiagnosis of this and underdiagnosis and for that matter in terms of providing medications there is some overdosing as well as underdosing. Some children that would benefit from treatment of ADHD do not receive that treatment. Uh, in fact parents may uh, be under the impression that uh, the medication is going to turn their child into a future drug addict. Uh, the research suggests no, it's uh, actually the other way around. ADHD, if not treated, uh, seems to actually increase the likelihood of that person developing a drug addiction problem later. Now, that said, there are other children who um, are not truly uh, exhibiting ADHD that are being medicated uh, because of poor diagnosis. And so we have both sides of the coin. Notice also the rates of diagnosis vary greatly. Uh, as you can see in the chart on the right, uh, a much larger percentage of boys are diagnosed with ADHD. And you'll also notice that there's some very distinct differences in terms of cultural differences. And one of the suggestions here is that identification of this uh, may not always go on in certain cultural groups uh, or that there is maybe a avoidance of diagnosis in certain populations uh, such that some kids that might benefit from treatment uh, don't receive that treatment. Uh, we should also note that there are other uh, approaches to treatments of ADHD other than medications. Uh, there are behavioral approaches in which uh, the parents teacher is trained to give very consistent guidelines, consistent discipline. Uh, the child uh, needs very um, uh, good routines in order to prevent uh, forgetting things due to lack of attention. Uh, they need uh, checklists to help remind them of things that they should be doing. Uh, they need uh, occasional redirecting of their attention by their teachers at school and so forth. Uh, and some of these programs using 
uh, the behavioral approach have been quite successful at treating this without medications. Uh, that said, there may be some children that uh, nothing but medication is uh, sufficient. But do be aware there are some behavioral treatments and, and in my opinion those ought to be uh, investigated first. Now another type of special needs uh, would be a learning disability. And this is a delay in acquiring specific academic skills like reading or math skills. And this delay in these areas is not due to mental retardation, uh, intellectual disability. It's not due to a physical disability or due to the child's home environment. Uh, there simply is difficulty with certain areas of learning for that child. Medications are not effective in targeting that sort of uh, pro problem. However, many children are able to overcome that learning disability through very specifically planned educational programs. As we look at learning disabilities, uh, it may be that that individual is simply uh, not as gifted in one area of intelligence uh, but normal in all others. Uh, very consistent with Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Dyslexia is an unusual difficulty learning to read. Uh, as a learning disability, this is a term that's been used by educators for many years. Again, psychologists uh, do not use this as a specific diagnosis. Um, they would diagnose this as a learning disability in the area of reading. Now, dyslexia, it turns out, is not just one thing. It takes many forms and also the causes are uh, many as well depending upon what, uh, what form of dyslexia we have. Now for many years educators thought that dyslexia was caused by the child not moving their eyes correctly across the page. And indeed, in some cases, that is true. Uh, in some cases, it's a matter of the child not being able to uh, correctly track the words across the page. But it turns out a more common cause of dyslexia is the child has difficulty distinguishing sounds from one another. And often one of the indicators of this is a speech impediment of some sort and the child being unable to distinguish the sounds also in their speech uh, does not differentiate. If this is the case, they have found that speech therapy may prevent dyslexia if started soon enough or if uh, occurs later can help the child to learn to read who already has had difficulty with it. So it turns out actually hearing the sounds uh, differentiating is most commonly the pro cause of this. Now that said, there's no standard treatment because to treat this kind of problem we have to determine, well in this case, what caused it and the causes do vary as we mentioned. Next we get to the autistic spectrum and this is a group of disorders, the primary characteristics of which include uh, one or several of the following. Impairment in communication, in learning to communicate, whether that is uh, through uh, language or through uh, physical gestures, uh, facial expressions, and impairments in social interaction, uh, difficulty uh, interacting appropriately with others, uh, difficulty developing um, uh, empathy and awareness of others, uh, theory of mind. Uh, this might also uh, manifest as difficulty bonding and forming uh, relationships with others. In some cases, uh, even making eye con contact with others may be painful for the child. Also, we may see restricted and repetitive stereotypical patterns of behavior uh, where the child 
uh, engages in maybe um, constant rocking back and forth or spinning around. And restricted interests, often the child uh, becomes obsessed with, uh, who knows, maybe the minor, the most minor thing, specks of dust on the floor. Uh, and also very restricted in terms of activities. Uh, we say one of the most common uh, things within that autistic spectrum is emotional blindness, simply a difficulty uh, getting any awareness of others' emotions. And in some cases, the child himself uh, has difficulty experiencing the normal range of emotions. Now, when we see all of these characteristics present, then this is what we might call classic autism, uh, the full-blown version of this. However, there are other uh, manifestations of this where not all of these characteristics are present. Uh, for example, Asperger's syndrome. Uh, the child has social impairment, restricted interests, may actually be very intelligent, so they spend a great deal of time studying some very restricted sort of uh, uh, information and may become sort of experts on it. Uh, and then they may drone on emotionless for hours. Sometimes they refer to these children as little professors. I can't imagine why. Anyways, did want to mention though that in the uh, latest version of DSM, uh, DSM-5, uh, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, uh, they have eliminated Asperger's syndrome as a specific disorder. And now they have sort of combined all of these uh, things on that autistic spectrum into just simply autism. Now, factors that seem to contribute to the development of autism are, first of all, genetics, uh, where there are similar problems within families. Uh, we may see this more likely occurring. Also, they have found that there are certain neurons called mirror neurons. These mirror neurons are activated when we observe someone else of our species doing something. And this seems to be our basis for understanding other people's emotions, uh, maybe uh, also observational learning, uh, picking up language by observing others. And they find that those with autism, uh, these mirror neurons are not as active as they normally would be. They've also noted that very frequently uh, the autistic child has an overactive limbic system that produces sensitivity to strong stimuli, uh, bright lights or uh, sounds that maybe wouldn't bother others. Uh, they might be sensitive to touch, and that might contribute to difficulties in developing uh, social relationships with their uh, parents and so forth. The onset of autism and its course varies. Often it's evident already in infancy when the child uh, does not respond to being picked up and uh, massaged and so on in a normal sort of way. Uh, they tense up or uh, they uh, avoid contact uh, where we see the infant doesn't produce those social smiles that might suggest uh, something already at that point very early on. Now as time then uh, passes also the evidence of it becomes more uh, readily observable. Now, in fact, the course of autism varies greatly. Uh, some children may improve significantly. Others get worse. Uh, in fact, one particular pattern, Rett syndrome, uh, the child develops social relationships and communication skills, uh, language, and so on, and then begins degenerating and losing those abilities. Uh, that said, where there is improvement, usually that is connected with significant efforts by others, parents, uh, 
uh, therapists and so on to help the child to develop some of these abilities that are not natural for them. There's been a dramatic increase in the diagnosis of autistic spectrum disorders here in the U.S. And uh, for example, uh, here in Texas, wealthy school districts increase diagnosis of this, tripling the diagnosis in a six-year period. However, there was no change in the diagnose, diagnostic rates in poor districts. Seems to suggest that simply uh, the wealthier school districts had were able to hire professionals who could identify autism and did so more readily, uh, whereas it might be going undiagnosed in the poorer school districts. Now also note that one of the reasons is diagnosis of autism has broadened to include a wider range of people. So that also in part uh, accounts for why there are more people with autism now. And there's greater awareness. Uh, even parents are mostly aware of some of the basic uh, characteristics of autism and may uh, notice that in their child. Years ago, uh, when people were not aware of autism, they might have assumed the child with autism was uh, had an intellectual disability uh, in those days called mental retardation. Now, some have hypothesis that various uh, inoculations, uh, for example, uh, uh, inoculations for childhood diseases, were causing children to develop autism. Uh, some of these people pointed to uh, mercury that was thought to be part of those, uh, those inoculations. This has now been proven to be a hoax. In fact, the individuals who started this entire uh, rumor, uh, one has lost their medical license and the other researchers have uh, recanted, uh, indicating that they never really believe this to be true yet we still hear this being promoted by some people uh, in the media. But many studies now have been done comparing the rates of, the, of autism in children who've received the immunizations uh, as compared to those who don't, and there is no higher incidence of autism in children that receive immunizations. So uh, there's just nothing to that hypothesis. Others have suggested a variety of chemicals in our modern environment to which children are exposed may be producing more autistic children, uh, but we really have not had the ability to, to directly study this and determine uh, if and if so which of these modern chemicals may be contributing. Uh, maybe in the future there may be uh, some way of identifying some of these. Now to wrap up then, uh, awareness of developmental disorders benefits all of us. And as we're aware of that, we may be able to help identify these as they appear. Uh, we also will recognize that in many cases the child that's having problems, uh, it's not something that is their fault or their parents' fault per se, uh, but rather this disorder which they have developed. And we also then uh, become aware that those who have these type of disorders may in fact make important contributions in a very unique way. And Temple Graydon is an example of this. Uh, she has autism and as she grew up she looked at things differently because of her autism. And one of the things that she became aware of is the perspective that cattle have when they're being rounded up for slaughtering and so forth, and how cattle respond to stimuli that might not bother us, like a waving flag uh, with fear and panic. And so she was able to come up with a series of recommendations that resulted in a more humane treatment of cattle, uh, more humane ways of dealing with these. 
and these have been adopted by much of the cattle industry today. Uh, so, in fact, those with uh, developmental disorders uh, can, in many time, in many ways, make some unique contributions due to their own unique perspective and find ways to succeed. Uh, that said, uh, often this will require the rest of us to provide uh, special uh, educational programs and treatments that can help them. Now, being aware of developmental disorders also gives us some insight into normality uh, and sort of what sort of things uh, are present there uh, that we can appreciate. It should also remind us that all children experience problems of one kind or another and challenges that all children have strengths as well as vulnerabilities and that all children need care and attention. So awareness of these disorders benefits everyone. So there you go. I uh, hope that was helpful. And uh, you might want to have a look in your textbook as well. Uh, read over that section. So uh, thanks. Bye-bye.